died. In 1945, 1945, October 6, everything changed. We went from relative to absolute in terms of weaponry. Well, we weren't yet at a point where, as I was saying to you before the camera, we weren't yet at a point at that stage where the weapon systems collectively were, as I, the term I use, is species lethal. Oh, no, we weren't. We well, weren't politically, we, we weren't, but technologically, we were. Yeah. See, there's a difference between politics. The nation state, after all, uh, yeah. came up from the 18th century. The nation state is a horse and buggy yeah. machine. Uh, everybody, 98% of the national citizens of the 18th century were farmers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then we had these revolutions, yeah. uh, technology, steam engine, technology, electronics, yeah, right. and then finally nuclear yeah. in 1945. Uh -huh. And then along came this space station, you know, right. <laughs> Delta, yeah. we escaped. Yeah. And we escape gravity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so now yeah. we're in a space age, yeah, as Bucky Fuller used to say. And, and, and Bucky's looking for an operating manual for Spaceship Earth. <laughs> exactly and he right. And the term. And we both, I admire him just endlessly. I could read oh, him yeah. and do. I don't think there's anybody that I can really draw upon that seems to have it more, as the kids say, together right. than Bucky. I thought he was. He was know, a genius. He, he was, and he was a comprehensive list. Yeah. So that's a system thing, rather than a specialist in something. You might say he was also a unitive thinker. Yes. He, he thought vertically. Okay. You know, he thought yeah. vertically. He did. Yeah. yeah. He thought of he thought of the whole, like right. Einstein. Uh -huh. You know, Einstein said the universe is a whole, and let's start from that. That's what well, I call a holistic way of thinking. I know. It's I'm all confused. Now. Ontological. On, and not on, teleological. Uh, tele not teleological. You say, now, oh, teleological okay. is from here to there, uh, but yeah. ontological is accepting the, the whole yeah. immediately. Yeah. And that's what, uh, and you I know. Yeah. Uh, and the whole, of course, <clears throat> when a nuclear bomb came along, yeah. suddenly our minds had to go holistic politically because mm -hmm. <clears throat> nuclear means everybody. You see, uh, this hasn't penetrated people's minds yet. You know, they think the nuclear is just a weapon of war. But no, nuclear is a holistic weapon pointing at everybody, pointing at humanity. So what good does it mean to be a national citizen, an American, a German, a Frenchman, an uh, Afghan, or a Jew, or a Catholic, or a... Or a As we the, have that been game is divided up. up. As that we game have is been up. divided up. Yeah. So then I thought to myself, well... And another thing which happened, my brother got killed, and that, yeah. that was, war? yeah, he was a soldier, yeah. sailor rather, on, yeah. a, on the USS Buck, yeah. and he was at the Battle of Salerno, and that yeah. ship went down, was the only ship that went down, yeah. and that does something to you. Yeah, that yeah. does, a, your, your, your own brother is, you know, better guy than you. Yeah. Why, is, why is he dead? You're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, why, why wasn't I killed in yeah. World War II? There must yeah. be a reason. That's an expansion of And then along comes uh, these books like uh, Wendell Wilkie's One World yeah. and uh, Emery Reeves' The Anatomy of Peace. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Big, big book in the, for Thank Einstein. You. 1945, you. Einstein said, this is it. You've got to read this book. Yeah. That's the book that turned a lot of us on, young okay, people. really. Thank you. Emery? Emery, Emery Reeves, R-E-V-E-S. R-E-V-E-S. I mean, anybody book. watching look, me, please yeah, look it up. go to the library, mm. Anatomy of Peace. It's more relevant today mm. than it was back in the, well, it's relevant, period. Because Emery Reeves said one thing in that book. Thank you. He says there's only one reason for war. In spite of the fact that you think it's economic or yeah. cultural or whatever. Yeah. He says war has only one, one fact. Mm. When two sovereignties come into the same territory, whether they're city-states, whether they're tribes, whether they're nations, mm -hmm. they can only do one of two things. They can either unite or they can fight. In other words, they create a higher level of sovereignty. Okay. And if they do that, then they've eliminated the lower level, which has no war, uh, which has no law between it. In other uh -huh. words, the higher level, that's what the Founding Fathers did. Right, right, right. The it's Founding true, yeah. Fathers had, had 13 states yeah. along the eastern seaboard For 13 <clears throat> colonies, right? with 3 million people. Uh -huh. right. And there was no law between them. It was like a little nation, United Nations community. Right. Uh -huh. And they were started, they said, well, England, France, and Spain are out there going to knock us off one by one. Mm -hmm. You know, the man of wars in the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. We've got to create our own government. Okay. We're not, after we won the Revolutionary War, yeah. you know, kick King George the Third off our back, right. and here we are fighting amongst ourselves. Yeah. New Yorkers are fighting with New Jerseyites. And that was a big time. That 1776 was a big time. That was the steam engine then. Adam Smith came along. Exactly. And the American Revolution 
which was calling into question the legitimacy, assumed legitimacy <clears throat> of the dynastic states that had ruled feudal Europe for right. a thousand years. And not only that. And that was a big break with that. But and you know was, the, the key document mm -hmm. which, which, which fostered the starting of the United States was, of course, the Declaration of Independence. Okay. Which talked about when are the when are the events of well when are the uh, events when of, of human of when human are the accords of human humanity and so forth. No, when in the course of human events. When in the course of human events. Sorry. You gotta get it. And there are certain <laughs> and then there are certain inalienable rights. rights. Yeah. And what are they? Life, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. And you know, of course, that it was originally written that life, liberty, and property. That Property, was yeah. Written. I think that there was, was somehow they eliminated and for they some reason. They fought like tigers. Yeah, that's they right. They were an incredible founding uh, generation, yeah. but they fought like tigers over. But they were making a huge qualitative transformation and challenged to the way legitimacy had been perceived for a thousand years yeah. under hereditary uh, kings and earls and so forth. Now, let me ask you a question. Change, yeah. What are the words that come after life, liberty, pursuit of happiness? I don't know. Well, that's that's the key because... You get me on the universal declaration because I, <laughs> human rights as you walked in the door, you sucker. But isn't that yeah. an amazing yeah, fact? Yeah, it's a great document. They defined yeah. how do you protect life, liberty, because yeah. relevant to today. Yes, yeah, sir. Everybody, all these uh, riots in, in Cairo oh, and uh, Jordan and so big, Yemen, yeah. they're claiming for human rights. They right. don't know it. They talk about freedom and democracy. Mm -hmm. But the amazing thing about that 1787 thing was that they, uh, 1776, governments are created among men with the consent of the governed. Uh -huh. That's how you protect. In other words, you eliminate a condition of anarchy right. between the sovereign states. Right. Well, it was. And, and the other thing about the other thing yeah. about the United States, mm -hmm. which is relevant today. Yeah. They got together, 55 guys in, in Independence Hall in yeah. Philadelphia. And their lawyers. And the, well, no, I don't know whether they had no, the lawyers. They were no, lawyers. No, a lot of them were lawyers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, you notice the law. And governors. Yeah, right, right. But right. you know what they did? They had to get rid of their instructions from their particular states because they didn't have any instructions. Why, why were they there? Well, they, had, they set up the Confeder uh, Articles of Confederation first. No, they had to the, get away from Yeah, them. but the they Articles of Confederation were before they got there. They weren't working. Oh, oh, okay. They weren't working. I'm, so I'm you know what they did? They said somehow we have to, we cannot operate in this Congress as state citizens right. because that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. How do we divorce ourselves from, how do we ex enter the idea that we are simply human beings mm -hmm. with the right of political choice? One guy raises his hand and says, I make a motion mm -hmm. that we constitute ourselves a committee of the whole. Okay. Committee of the whole. Uh -huh. That word whole is very interesting. I like holistic thinking like Exactly. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and everybody looks and says, that's it. Yeah. And uh, the chairman says, all in favor? Aye. Yeah. Everybody. Now they are committee Magic of the whole. Yeah, uh, now, yeah. they can, now they can use their imagination yeah. to create a whole new government mm -hmm. that didn't exist before. Uh -huh. And as Einstein says, imagination is more important than intelligence. Right, he did. Absolutely. So they imagined, yeah. they imagined the United States of America uh -huh. at that yeah. point. Yeah, right. And that's how it happened. And that was a break in history, because that, in terms of Europe, and there were other things going on in other parts of the world, that was a break in a thousand year period where yeah. it had been the dynastic state, and mm -hmm. legitimacy was this, it finally got to be called divine right of kings, and right. they got some sort of a thing where they want to reify the basis, and then they have ideas, who's legitimate? What is legitimate? Exactly. And if you bring it up into the modern world, one guy wrote a book called the Sc How the Scots Invented the Modern World and Everything in It. It was mm -hmm. largely the Scots. Mm -hmm. It was Adam Smith, Ricardo Hume, not Ricardo Hume, and then the invention of the steam engine was there. And it was, and a huge number of the people who signed the Declaration were Scots, more than the French Enlightenment. It was the Enlightenment coming out of Europe. Well, a lot of philosophers like Bergson, for instance, uh, and yeah. uh, Socrates, and Plato, Aristotle. Well, that went, back guys, to the, that went back to the classical Yeah, time. they yeah. went back to the ancient Greeks. The ancient yeah, right. Greeks called themselves cosmopolites. Did they really? You know, the that's Stoics a, and so forth. That's a great deck. Nope. It sounded like a rap song. <laughs> cosmopolite. You could get all kinds of tongue around that. I mean, there's no, there's, yeah. This yeah. is the oldest idea in the book. No, but what I'm trying to say is, there, there, so it evolved things evolved and then you got into and and he claimed in the book seriously Herman 
uh, is his name, Edward Herman, wrote the book, and he said, if you look at the major institutions that are thought of as uh, legitimate in a certain sense, a good deal of it comes from the revolution that was done in the United States of America, yeah. heralding the Industrial Revolution and that, and the pattern by which the world is understood to be legitimately organized mm -hmm. now is largely a result of some variations on what came out of this country, particularly after the Second War when we emerged as the superpower right. uh, in the world and so forth. So that's a pattern they do. Is that pattern legitimate in a historical sense beyond the condition? Or is there a need for there to be a qualitative transformation because of, of ontologic change in terms of, the, uh, of technology and so forth in this time? Is the system that we're saying is good for the world, if they could just uh, follow us, good for the all of time, or is there a revolution blowing in the wind that is needed, being sensed and being expressed in these revolutions that are going on, that may finally come around to the United States of America, well, word, and have qualitative changes to the United States of America, okay. which does not have well, its act together. you're asking too many questions now. Well, let me, let me, let that's me cosmo, speak. that's, that's let me comprehensive speak, Carl, you thinking. Got to, you, you're, 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 you know it all, you see. No, I don't. You got a guest here who, uh, who has to say his bio. You first asked for my bio. Yeah, I think the word that you use, which mm. is so, which is so pertinent, is mm. the word system. Yeah. Now we have the DNA code. Yes, indeed. And we know that we are a biological system. No matter what you believe, no matter what your religion is, no matter what your gender is, no matter what your color of your skin is, right. our biological code is practically the same. All the, you know, all of us. Yeah, so all this, of us humans. Human this beings. is a systemic way of thinking. Yeah, right. Comprehensive. The human, yeah. the human yeah. species mm -hmm. is a system. Yeah. And the proof of it is that we spend one third of our life in bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. No, <laughs> it's, yeah. A, it's yeah. a. And it's you a, could extend it. Could you not extend it out into the biological process? This idea of a love lock of Gaia, well, where they that, see the Earth as an organism. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Now you're in a, yeah. in a conceptual world. Okay, yeah. See, I'm talking about the system, the biological system, which your oh. heart's beating, my heart's beating. Yeah. You're drinking that. I'm drinking that. You're one third. Mm. Your body is two thirds uh, water, yeah, seventy yeah, percent yeah. water, etc., etc. Mm. This identifies us as mm -hmm. a species. Yeah. And I don't care who you think you are, mm -hmm. what you think you are up here, yeah, what yeah. your religion is up here, yeah. you're part of the biological species called humanity. We have oh. a word for it, humanity, uh -huh. okay? Yeah, The That's other true. side of us mm -hmm. is conceptual. We have words like love, fairness, justice, courage, kindness, all these conceptual words conceptual. Okay, that yeah. have nothing to do with the perceptual. You can't give oh. me 10 pounds of love. You can't tell me what color justice is, etc. Right. I'm mixing the perceptual and the and the conceptual. See, okay, that's and yet we know what uh -huh. is what is the essence of the conceptual human being. I, I this no, spell to, it out because I, it's interesting. Well, what yeah. are these people in the riots uh, mm. today? As we read the front pages of all the ten, what are they asking for? Freedom. Free, um, they don't define freedom. No. But freedom is a conceptual word. You okay. can't give me ten pounds of freedom. And you can't tell me what color freedom is. Right. And they're always, and then they get into a political thing. They want to be democratic. They want democracy. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means exactly what the Declaration of Human Rights was claiming: the mm -hmm. will of the people should be the basis of the authority of government. You see, so that it's amazing. Yeah. They're asking for conceptual values. They're yeah. saying we're free. Now that doesn't mean absolute freedom. That means relative freedom because we're all part of a society called humanity. You yeah, see? and a wider ecology. And then ecology. how do you yeah. combine yeah. your relative freedom yeah. with democracy? Okay. Well, that's simple. We know how to make laws. Uh -huh. You know, you go anywhere in the world and drive a car, and no matter what, what you come up to in a crossing, the red that flashes at you means stop. Yeah. I don't care what country you go in. Yeah. I don't care who you are in that and car. What language you speak? I don't care what language you speak. Yeah. I don't care whether you're male or female. That red means stop. Uh, okay. Well, look at the interesting part yeah. about that. Everybody agrees with that. Now, why yeah, do they agree say, yeah, that red right. means stop and green means go? Okay, that's an interesting question. Because I'm very interested in that idea of conception and so forth. It I'm not is a of common, things. yeah, common civic code that is based upon two facts. Yeah. The one and the many. Uh -huh. The one and the many. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. every city is based upon the one and the many. Every mayor of every city 
is, based, is, is, is bounded by that code. Every mayor has to get water to every single tap, and, but he has to have a municipal water supply. That's the many. Uh -huh. Now, what is the, the, the traffic light? The traffic light yeah. is to my advantage to stop at the traffic light when it's red. Uh -huh. Why? Because the crossing is like a little government. The okay. crossing is, every crossing is a government. Yeah, okay, yeah. And uh -huh. that red is just a red and green light. That's all it does. Right. So it, it doesn't control me. I control the car. All the cars coming to that crossing uh -huh. control, is controlled by each driver. Uh, right. So each driver accepts the one and the many. Right. Now what happens? Like an individual cell in an organism? It's a code of right. justice. Right. Or oh, of justice. It's justice uh -huh. at that crossing. Uh -huh. It's amazing. Uh -huh. Now, yeah. that uh -huh. light is mm -hmm. timed, right? Right. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, yeah, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. I guess so. And you agree, that's, he said, that's just. Because that 30 seconds applies to everybody at that crossing. Right. Uh -huh. Now suppose that light gets stuck. You come up to it, and suddenly you're there for more than 30 seconds. You're there for 30 minutes. And there you begin you're to there think. for a minute. Yeah, yeah. And you're a minute and a half. Yeah, right. What is that? What are you thinking now? You're thinking that law is no. That light is no longer just. Right. Because these cars are now passing in front of me, you know, on the other side, only your lane that had the and light. I'm stuck here. Uh huh. You take back your sovereignty mm -hmm. now. Okay. You see, you're the driver. Yeah. The light doesn't control your car. Uh -huh. You take back your sovereignty, and you say, "Now I'm the I'm the I'm deciding what is just and what's not just." What What's the lesson? It's broken here? the law, yeah. the code of That's justice. Right, right. right. That when you extrapolate an individual, that, for the individual, extrapolate judgment. that to yeah. the world. Yeah. It's very. Everybody has that sense. If of all justice. the lights stayed at thirty, would be okay. And there's like, for instance, there's a, as I understand, there's something like. Um, a hundred trillion cells in a human organism, and each cell matters. <laughs> yeah. And each cell is connected to everyone else. The pancreas is, you know, it's oh, incredible. Sure. And the exchange of oxygen, you know, it's amazing. Right. I wake up often and just think it's amazing that anything exists. And in terms of thermodynamics, it's amazing anything could exist on this third planet in this another, another, solar system. Another question of perceptual. Where, yeah. do you, where do you get your energy from when you go to sleep? I have no idea. I mean, I haven't thought subconscious. Isn't that yeah, yeah. Nobody uh, knows where. Where do you get the energy oh, from? We, uh, even they don't know. That well, being the scientists. I know. Is, oh, okay. It's very simple. <laughs> okay, where? Bucky Fuller knew. All the scientists know. Yeah. The energy comes from outside, obviously. Okay. In other words, your body is like a battery. Yeah. And when you go to sleep, the reason why you have to go to sleep is because your brain has to be quies quiescent, because you have another body. Another body. It's okay. called the pranic body, the buddhic body, and so forth. It's on. Prana, yeah. And it separates. It separates from your physical body. And it sucks in energy from the cosmos. That's why some of the gurus, the in masters, sleep. and so in forth, sleep. they say, yeah. we are star people. Uh -huh. We're star people because mm -hmm. we depend upon an energy. That's what Einstein said, the synergy. Bucky Fuller said, the synergy mm -hmm. all over. What is synergy? Mm -hmm. It's cosmic energy. Well, I think of synergy in a dictionary term as the behavior of systems unpredicted by the sum of their parts. There's something resonating more than the sum of the parts of a system. Well, and a lot, I think the universe. A lot of definitions. Is, well, the definition of that is what he gives, and it makes sense to me. And there is in time, if you bring in time, and then in, if you bring in the evolutionary process of the occurrence of a lot of different species and everything. Um, we appeared 200,000 years ago. There were See, australopithecines, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna 7 go million. Your, I'm going to go back to your opening question. going to go back to perception your and conception. Opening question. Yeah, okay. What oh. is your bio? <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Why? I just, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll share it with you in the audience. I just had my DNA done oh. uh, with the guy Spencer Wells down the National Geographic, did that journey of man. They're testing a Y chromosome in the male, the dispersal of mankind from Africa, where we all come, as mm -hmm. best our understanding is. Well, it goes, back origin, 60, yeah. goes back 60,000 years with scientific markers, that is scientifically validated uh, ancestor of mine, my individual, 60,000 years ago and close to what is now Ethiopia. 
Let me bring out another Isn't fact. Isn't that something they can bring that with scientific yeah, understanding? They call them markers. Then they went to they went to Iraq, then they went to Bulgaria, and then they finally to England. But that well, they can do that. So much, so many million, yeah. so many thousand people behind each person. Yeah, right. You know the ancestors, ancestors. But the interesting fact: couple a couple of weeks ago, I yeah. read an item in the New York Times where the NASA people, NASA? the, the, I, the yeah. Kelber Telescope. Okay, I don't know. Uh, was, is circling around the uh, the solar system, yeah. uh, photographing, okay. and so forth. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a I don't Kelber know that Telescope. One. No, I knew Wilkinson. Or Kleber. I forget the name, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. And they made the most amazing discovery. Now, you know, up to now. Oh, the, that another solar system Well, or no, not yeah. even a solar system. Mm. Up to now, mm. The only the supposition was, well, we're not alone in the universe. You know, wh why is it this little third-rate sun here and the fringe of the galaxy and our little planet revolving around and so forth? Probability. Why do we think that we're alone? Probability would say we're and almost we never knew, not, but we don't have any evidence. We never of. had physical. Listen. Yeah, I'm listening carefully. Yeah. Physical evidence. Yeah. That there were other planets. Oh no. Oh, now, I. Now okay. this this item. Yeah, right. In two two weeks ago. Yeah, I, I think I saw it. Yeah, yeah right. I'm sure yeah. we will. But the mm. implications of it are astounding and far-sighted because they discovered around a star, mm -hmm. 53 million or trillion miles away. I know. <laughs> something like that. I think you can't even. A lot of room out there. Stand. Yeah, right, right. 1,264 planets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they verified with this tell us with this uh, camera, this incredible camera, yeah. that there were planets, physical evidence of planets, but that was only a tiny part of the universe. Yeah. If they discovered 1,200 planets there, the universe must be full of planets. Well, it gets Millions. more. Well, as I understand, it gets to be more complicated than that because not only is Einstein's thing and everything, and they're reading the, this universe, and it develops. I think everything's in a certain sense uh, thermodynamic. It's all gradients of, of energy from the sun and we're placed. But now, Green, uh, Brian Green, Michio Kaku have come up with this super string theory, the mathematics of which suggests that yeah, this universe is probably part of parallel universes that are connected yeah, by I'm wormholes. I'm a science fiction fan. So it's a big, it, it's not, yeah, but it, no, it's, a, it's relatively new. And that, uh, it, 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 so that brings in, is this a closed system? Is this universe closed? Yeah. What are the laws, of the second law of thermodynamics, do they hold? Or is it an open system? Which, you know, it... it Fascinating. It, the thing is, we're, it, it's, a, it's increasing exponentially our understanding and are able to take the measure. They've got a thing out of CERN now the Wilkinson got a picture of the shock wave of the Big Bang of our universe within about 200,000 years of its occurrence 13.8 billion years ago. Mm. Pretty good measure. They got a thing coming out of CERN with an array. They're going to, it's called LISA, and they're going to, Michio Kaku tells us and others, when they get it to, it's soon now, it'll be soon, they're going to picture the universe shock wave beginning of our universe within a nanosecond of its occurrence 13.8 billion yeah. years ago. Pretty good measure All being right. able to take the measure of things take, by this consciousness. Let's take these facts and apply them to who we think we are. Okay, good. Mm. Because who we who who we know that we are now is we're living on one planet. Right. We're all planetary citizens, if you will. Whether yeah. we, I don't care. You, we got to get to your flag. Yes, absolutely. He's yeah. the original. Uh, oh God, you mentioned my flag. Let's, well, let's, we can hold it up here. Here's, I can, a, here's a planetary flag. Oh, here's a planet. You take one end. I'll take. <laughs> I'm happy to join you in this. Beautiful. Here's the planetary there flag. See, and he, the planet. this is the original. We'll get a long shot. Yeah, this is the original um, concept of him. Uh, he's also the one who issues the universal passport. Not a nation state, but world citizens. All right, We're me, all world let, citizens. Let me explain this flag. Yeah, because flag the flag. That person is just a person. It's not a male or female. We right. tried to make it kind of a composite. But it not only represents each one of us, mm -hmm. but it represents humanity. Okay. You see, so humanity is in the world. It's uh -huh. in our world. Mm -hmm. Why is it green? Because the nature, you see, this is a, we're all bound by the environment. Right. As, uh, That's true. The as green James, movement. James now. Lovelock says. Yeah, it's, James uh, Lovelock. I, th I like James Lovelock. Yeah, the world is, yeah. the world is Gaia. The world is a living world. Yeah. Uh, what does this mean? This means spirit. This means consciousness. Uh -huh. You see, we're not just within that framework. We have a consciousness which 
you know, goes out to the infinite. Well, we yeah. We talk about God so glibly. We talk about love. We talk about uh, fairness and justice. These are all universal values. Okay, well, let me, let me, let okay. me finish with this. Thing. Go ahead and finish. Yeah, and means. this white means yeah. intelligence. Okay. Our intelligence now. We have now kids sitting at their computers, yeah. six, seven, eight, nine years old. What are they doing? They're going online. Yeah. What does online mean? Yeah. Online means cyberspace. Right. right. Where are the frontiers? There are no frontiers. Yeah. So this is the mental thing. Yeah. This is our minds. Right. Anyone now can think uh -huh. to the end of the universe. Yeah. Now we have Google. Google, you go to stars. You can look at uh, Andromeda by going to Google, yeah, etc. Yeah. You can Google anything in the world. It's the most amazing thing. Yeah, Wikipedia. So we have yeah. infinite knowledge mm -hmm. at our it, mental disposal. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, we, changes, that changes the whole thing of intelligence. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white or male or female or Christian or Sunni or Shiite or whatever, Catholic, mm -hmm. Jewish, mm -hmm. and so forth. Intelligence has no nationality. Okay. And that's what this flag means. Did you design this flag, or was this the well, design this is, of somebody yeah, else? It, it fell into shape almost by itself. <laughs> <laughs> like most good things in a jam session. Yeah, it yeah, makes sense. Right, it makes sense yeah. and everything like that. Just like this declaration. Yeah. Well, you know, we took... That's the, Eleanor Roosevelt territory. Well, God it's bless the UN. her. It's the UN. God bless her. She worked on the Universal, Universal Declaration. Declaration. 1948. Now, the interesting thing about this declaration, mm. is, first, it's the word universal. Yeah. So what is it? It applies to everybody. Yeah. Human rights. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about, uh, you know, American rights yeah. or, or Taliban rights or whatever. We're talking White about White males' human rights. rights. or We're all human beings, yeah. obviously. Nobody mm. can deny it. Mm. And the amazing thing to me is that nobody has read this, or very few people have read oh, this. Oh, I've read it all. I've not. I've been out of touch know. with it lately. Well, I asked you before it, the it show. It had the 50th anniversary I'm going I'm to expose you. Okay, yeah, okay. Before the I show. I know, you asked me for some I paragraph three of something like that <laughs> right now, young man. And I couldn't come up with it, damn it. There's only some room in okay, my head. Okay, I'm going to educate oh, you oh. now. <laughs> Let me read it. L look, yeah, you read it. Everyone is entitled to a social and international order in which the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration can be fully realized. That is one. That's, there's another one. Do you want that? Yeah, Article 28. Three. There's only three articles. Oh, there's there. three. Article 28. I put all these on cable, the television, I about know, 10 I years know. ago. It's amazing. Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government. That is a key declaration. That's, that's a, a key right. That's pretty good. And the then Article the 21, sub. Three, universal declaration. Everyone has the right to leave any country, including his own, and to return to his country. Okay, that's Article 13. I think you're reaching for a universal passport. Oh, you got it. You know me. <laughs> uh, he has, he is, let's hold, I'll hold it up. And if you can come in, Josh, if you can. He is, this is another thing we've got to get to, because you're world citizen number one. Because you well, took an initiative. You know, well, it's it well deserved. And because it helps put you in the picture as a, a person who's been on to this for a long time. In 1953, he he took advantage of the he took account of account of the fact that we're one world and the sovereignty is a thing a source of a great deal of difficulty and he issued a universal passport or you you talk to it well, I'm that, holding it up until passport, they passport you see that passport has one object mm -hmm. it says the world is one and we're on it yeah <laughs> you know that's the that the, the no but most people have passport it's the united no states one, or france and, or germany or japan well, forget this all these, is universal and you can travel all on these this. fictions all uh -huh. these nations are fictions which were created know, we by humans get... yes. in the past right and i as i pointed out the internet Do it here the, oh he's going to come in the internet okay. the internet is open cyberspace. Yeah, right. That's right. Uh, we can look out and see the stars at night, and we all do it. The nations are we like we all sleep at night, right? Which, uh, the, uh, unites us and uh -huh. so forth. Our DNA code unites us. Uh -huh. So who is to tell us we can't travel on our own planet? Well, what they are, political authorities have done that because we divided it up so we could fight. Yeah, it's but like, we have, know, or okay, we could gain right. access, and then one would get weapons to beat the other tribe and build their tribe up, and realpolitik and all that. That's absolutely. That's part of what James J. He said history is a nightmare that of is injustice. Obsolete. Absolutely. And well, this, maybe history is obsolete, but well, we have to anchor to it. No, 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 no. no. The history. Mm. Uh, well, history is in the past. So, so you're right. In yeah, the sense, it's and obsolete. it's a nightmare. 
But the reason why it's obsolete is because we're living in a century where time and distance have collapsed in on themselves. Right, yeah. It's a there's time no of... time between people. There's no distance between people. Yeah. And what is one of the greatest ideas of that? Facebook. Facebook's <laughs> a social cell media. Cell phone. Right. Twitter, uh, t t t uh, what is it, Twittering, and so forth right. and so on. Right. Everybody is out there connected with everybody else. Right. And one of the reasons why that these uh, riots have been taking part mm -hmm. is because even if they close down, if the nation closes down the Internet, uh -huh. suddenly everybody's got a Facebook. In fact, we're getting pictures now in Iran, for instance, if there's a problem in Iran, the mm. government will, will close down the, mm. uh, the internet. Mm. But people are just getting out their face, or their iBooks, or their, their, their iPhones, and so forth, and videotaping what's happening on the ground. Yeah. So, and that's only as, happening in just this last blink, well, eye as blink. Well, as you pointed out, and we were talking about this before, the media. The media is the message. Mm. The media has united us. We sit at our kimonos at 7 o'clock news and watch what's happened that day or that minute on the TV. Now, so yeah. So time and distance have collapsed in on themselves. But these things have happened in time. But look at the political world. The political mm -hmm. world is still back in the pre-industrial. Yeah, it's pre true. It, you're absolutely true. Absolutely true. I mean, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. And the nation state, that's what's came. We used to have, uh, you know, her hereditary. I'm a, I'm a subject of a king this or earl that or whatever. And now the nation state emerged, I guess, in the 19th century. Remember that? Let me see. Here's another thing. Bucky Fuller. How can we sovereign even? world citizens govern our world? Okay, let's see if you... This I don't, is know, the I don't know which camera... There we go. We got it. This, this is, is the Bucky Fuller design. That looks like a Bucky Fuller geodesic uh, design. See, yeah, uh -huh. you're talking about form, mm -hmm. how, to, how, we, how we put this together. Mm -hmm. Well, humanity is already together. Mm -hmm. This is a new way of having a meeting where everybody has a voice. Mm -hmm. You see, the way politics are now, you vote once a year or once every six months, mm -hmm. and you delegate somebody to go to a, uh, a city, so they, they can go to be, the Congress. So they can cash so in yeah. and make a lot of money from yeah. the people who are of special exactly. interest. Are gonna exactly, yeah. exploitation, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. This is Bucky Fuller's mm -hmm. idea, or, and, and actually taken by uh, the greatest cybernetician I know, Stafford Beer, whom you know. I don't know, no. Stafford Beer was a, don't remember. The, no, pres I'm... the president of the uh, World Association of Cybernetics. Okay, okay. General, yeah. general Systems. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, you're right. Right. Well, cybernetics right. is a new science. Yeah. How to organize complexity. It means steersman, cyber. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a systemic way of thinking. Mm -hmm. a systemic way of thinking. Yeah. Well, he took this design, Bucky Fuller's design, and he said, this is an incredible way to get people together and every single person having a voice, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but yet a whole, the yeah. whole is, it's like a right. symf symphony orchestra. Right. Okay. I use the example of a symphony orchestra. Yeah. If you're a violinist and mm. you want to become a member of a symphony orchestra, you have had to practice and practice and yeah. practice all your life. Yeah, yeah. And when you finally sit in that seat, uh -huh. you haven't lost anything. Mm -hmm. You haven't lost your individual integrity because you've still got to play that violin yeah. or that oboe or that Music, uh, so Music's forth. a really good metaphor. But now you're yeah. within a hole. Yeah, or reality. So therefore, this is the one and the many again mm -hmm. applied to this way of having a meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, all these people... It looks like a Buckminster Fullerene almost, a yeah. carbon 60. That's now, coming here, to be relevant. Here's, in the very, here's, the, here's oh, how Oh, you to got do your it. thing. Yeah. Well, let me hold it up. Let's see if we can get in on this and let's people take a look at it. Give them a chance. You Would talk you like to, to it. be involved in a world parliament? This is the way to evolve a parliament where each one of us throughout the world has a voice. Mm -hmm. And it's a continuing voice, you see, because now we have to total communication. We have the Internet. Uh, we started this years ago back in 1993. And we had 30 cities, 30 people throughout the world who were in that teamwork and that it's a, it's a wonderful way to play a game. And that's the question we asked. How can we as sovereign world citizens govern our world? Mm -hmm. Because what does this You're mean? It this means that we are the governors uh -huh. on the bottom level. It's not the new world order that people are talking about, you know, governed by the big money bags. Uh -huh. No. On the contrary, it's each individual who uh -huh. says, wait a minute. I have the right to say what I want in this world. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have this question. It's an incredible 
uh, combination of, of the we and the many. This is a thing you've put together more recent in the last few yeah, years. Yeah. yeah. But You're you, always bringing up new things, Gary. Every time I see you, you've got some new great thing going on. Well, this is not Couldn't new. Couldn't you just I, take it easy and quit bombarding <laughs> us with great ideas and institutions? Well, I'll tell everything? you something. I'll yeah. tell you something. You're and, too and, damn creative. This is, this is a key to, to me. I'm an actor. Yeah, I know. I was you. trained as an actor. Yeah. And in a way, I accept the whole world as a stage. Thank you, yeah. And you're on it, and I'm on it, and yeah. everybody watching me is on it. Yeah. The Queen Elizabeth is playing a part. Yeah. You know, we're all playing our little roles. We have so tragedies, forth, and, so. and we have comedies. And we have <laughs> yeah. comedies yeah. and tragedies yeah. and yeah. so forth and yeah. so on. Yeah. If you think of the world like this, yeah. then you have another way of thinking, because you're thinking holistically. You're thinking, I'm in the world. Yeah. I'm part of the world. And, and you I, could say this world's too dull. I'm going to jazz, I'm going to jazz things up a bit. Do well, a, do a, a soft shoe. Uh, I look or, at every creator, or do a riff. You every know? creator thinks that dull, way. It's too dull. You know. Yeah. Every pe every playwright thinks that way. Yeah, every right. composer yeah, thinks that way. Right, right. Every person who's invented something. Yeah. As Bucky Fuller says, you know, don't fight the existing reality. Mm -hmm. If you want to change thing. Make a new reality. Yeah. Make through a new reality, and you'll make the old reality obsolete. Yeah, through design. Yeah. Through good design, and uh, you tool know, he designs. was a, uh, what do you call it? Anticipatory he design says, science. Yeah, he was, yeah he's thinking, be beautiful. He says the politicians don't change anything. No, I know, but I think at the end of his life, as he got older, he, he, he did write a couple of books that got to be political. There was uh, Critical Path and Grunch of Giants has got to be pretty critical of the uh, operating system. The world game, and he, yeah. Yeah, well, world game was done 65 or so. Yeah. But that was great systems thinking of putting things together. He was a brilliant mind. Well, you know, critical He's somebody path. we can repair remember to. Remember the article, remember the chapter on the world game? Uh, I don't know which chapter where. In well, what he book? talked. In Synergetics? In, uh, or? That was a critical path. Take... You know, but he talked about world money. Okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he gave. He... I know he talked about the grid. The, Atlanta, he, yeah. the grid, but he mm. came up with the idea that what is money? Mm -hmm. You know, there's mm. no legal definition for money. Okay. There's no legal. You can use anything for money as long as it performs the function of being a medium of exchange. Okay, yeah. It's a right. medium of exchange uh -huh. for uh -huh. real wealth and so forth. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How's, how's our time? We're okay, we're okay. We've got a good five minutes, 15 <laughs> minutes. So, anyway, what we did, we said, well, if money, as his idea is, money is crystallized energy. Uh, well, see, energy. Okay. Yeah. Whether it's you doing work and so forth and yeah. so on. Mm. And because the sun pours more energy on the earth every five minutes mm -hmm. than humanity uses all year. Oh, uh, humanity uses. Okay. No, yeah. that was one of his. Yeah, things. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Algeria, they're making huge solar plants, solar panels. And there's They're coming enough, around to enough that solar now. panels yeah. now to give to make enough megabytes translated into energy, turning the generators and so forth. And yeah. to, you can make energy from. You get this vast oil. expanse of the Sahara Desert to supply just supply all of Europe. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, let's hope. I think there's a lot. There's a tremendous amount of capability, but we do have old. Like, if you're a business person, you make an investment. You have to amortize your investment. We have a historical pattern, yeah. and this pattern that we're coming to now is one of change. Could be one of transformation. It could be one of qualitative transformation. Isaac Asimov says this is the defining generation in the. Whole whole evolutionary process of uh, consciousness. And um, I think that is the case. It's amazing to have been born in the defining generation. Probably many generations thought theirs was. But this is the one where we get down to some sort of a qualitative transformation in evolutionary terms. I had you a think sample. we're transcending hu uh, human history? Or that we're coming into a new relationship or... In oh, yeah. evol and evolution, there's steady and state. Happening. There's steady state, and then there's a quickening. It's like we're in the womb. There's steady state, and then Absolutely. punctuated equilibrium. Oh, yeah. That happens, and the new appears. And well, we may be coming to a new listen, uh, relationship to the cosmos. Every child, like every, on every child over six years old, mm -hmm. is in one world. Mm -hmm. You and one I. World. I'm 89 years old. You're so. You really? Yeah, 89. What did 89? I, what did I have? You're not 89 years old. You look 50. I'll be 90 in July. My Lord. <laughs> Good. You're doing, you have such a well-led life. I mean, you look like something, you look like Fred Astaire in his prime. You well, know? I can still yeah, dance, you know. You still do a soft <laughs> Well, God bless you. Yeah, anyway, to, yeah, they live in a one world and everything. They live yeah. in one world. You yeah. can't tell a child that there's anything like a nation. Mm. I mean, because they're in cyberspace already. 
I think right. what is happening to the kids of the world. When, yeah. I have two sons. Yeah. They're both uh, involved tremendously in computers. They, yeah. One is a webmaster and so forth. And yeah. One of my sons went to Harvard, and the mm. first first day he was there, I bought him a computer. Mm -hmm. He was the only freshman in Harvard with a computer. Wow, that was some that time point. ago. They've all got them now. Yeah. They've all got them now. Yeah, well, yeah. they all got them now from age zero. Yeah, almost. I know. I saw so a kid what playing. Is happening? Oh, See what's happening yeah. to their minds. Mm -hmm. Their minds now are evolving. <laughs> Both synapses are coming together, mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. I've got a G5 computer, a Mac, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. I only know about 10% of what that computer could do. I know about one tenth of but one tenth. But my sons, percent. you know, are like. I know. That. I went through a thing with a lot of creative people from here, and they had his son. They're seven years old. He could, his feet wouldn't touch the ground. It's sophisticated. He played it like <laughs> Vladimir Horowitz. You're nonchalant. I know. It, it's like a it, language to them. I know, and they just know. That's so encouraging. Well, it's exactly. chagrinning. They say somewhere in the good book that the children shall lead us. I think the thing is cyber. I Amen. think we should do well, well to line the, up to our... of the world are That's right, because they a just... Big school it's like learning a language in terms listen, of that. They the just largest, pick it up. The largest high school in the world is in Lucknow, India. Is that right? Okay. It's called the City Montessori School. It's got... Montessori, 30, yeah. Montessori School. It's yeah, got yeah. 39,000 students. Wow, that's a big school. And Class everybody... Size. The guy who headed it is named Jagnish Gandhi. Yeah. And he's a Baha'i. Okay. Now, one of the tenets of Baha'i religion is world citizenship. Right. So every child who comes into that school is immediately indoctrinated as a world citizen. Okay. From this age up to graduation. Do they all get issued so one of your passports? Well, uh, I think they should do that at graduation or right. maybe before. I wish I had the money for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But Jagdish Gandhi has the passport, and a uh -huh. lot of them do. And yeah, so forth. right. Well, they all understand this. Mm -hmm. To them, it's second nature. Right. They can't understand how a nation like India mm -hmm. can be a nuclear power, uh -huh. and then Pakistan a nuclear power, and then North Korea a nuclear. I mean, they say this is madness. What did uh, you bring us into the world for? See, this is what the children are thinking. Yeah. How dare you bring us into the world when you're still fighting wars, and now you have the nuclear power? Yeah. And they're blowing the whistle on us. These children are blowing the whistle on us. Well, what, we have to listen to them. Well, if we listen to them, could they tell us something? Let's say they could tell they us something. They are telling them. No, they're one all level, children. Or like I, pre I would present something to you. Let's say I'm a child. Or, you know, and, and you do modeling. There's some things you can't test. In a, like you can like in a scientific uh, way. You can't run a test in a Petri dish or something. But the modeling tells us with um, accuracy, uh, with uh, convincing quality, that the weapons that are developed, and that's an extension of our consciousness, and we've been able to extend our consciousness. It's an extension in, of our ignorance. Oh, no, it's an extension of our of our fear. Well, no, it's an extension that's not of conscious. that's not conscious. That's the well, I, that's a definite. It's an fearing? extension of our capability, extension of our senses into the environment and make the environment other than in the Eden-like senses given, which is a lot of most of the creatures. They don't have a chance. It's the difference between finding a cave that you can shelter in and building a house with a refrigerator and, uh, you know, the extension. Of, and that technological extension of our mental processes into the environment has now reached a point on one side of weapon systems, which even the great, uh, you know, despite all the artists, Leonardo da Vinci was of interest to the Medici so he could make a siege machine to to give him an advantage over another tribe so he would be able to politically we've, prevail. We've been through this. No, but the, that, the we and they type thinking. No, but it's been allows, operative uh, throughout the process. Yeah, but then, then no, we, but I'm trying to but make that's them, contrasted with what everything I've been saying in this past. No, hour, well, maybe so, but that what, we are a whole species. Well, it always has and, been, yeah, but this and it is always what has been but all they, through history, all the great sages and. Philosophers but we're back to the five-year-old asking his questions that's again. That's where nationalism now, wait a, I know, is And I'm glad for your thing, and you get over it, and it's a system. <laughs> we understand all that. But those weapon systems that have been extended based upon have fear. now. No, but wait a minute. 200,000 years is a long time for our species. There have been millions of years. But we get there, and those weapon systems, by the modeling, by the modeling system, are, I use the term, species lethal. They can model that. True. And that means that if they're unleashed in a spasm of hatred like we've been doing with great regularity, 
it would mean the end of our species, and that seems exactly. to be able to be verified by modeling and scientific modeling of that. That's a new, and that was not characteristic of, we were impotent, Second World War, remember? Okay. We were trying to kill well, everybody. You're talking to the, you're, you're, now I'm making a point. Let yeah, me make what the point. What is the solution? Let me make the point. First, well, I want the solution. No, I'm, I'm not, not interested. Solution. I know about the, all no, this. No, that is, so that's the thing that they're... How do you eliminate? No. How do you make yourself a species? No, that, first of all, that's capability. You recognize the intelligence that you have, and that intelligence allows you to organize your survival. Well, wait a minute. And that, the weaponry is a disjunction and not intelligence. It's based upon fear and based upon something which is negative, obviously, and, and pits you against another member yeah, of Yeah, and your it's species. been operative throughout yeah. the whole... Well, isn't this ignorance? Yes. Isn't this ignorance? Well, ignorance compared to where we are well, how now. How do you eliminate ignorance, no. my friend? Well, then the question I'm trying to ask you... How do you, you eliminate ignorance? You're I'm trying to make in, the point. Let me sitting, make... You're sitting with a guy yeah. who has declared himself a world citizen. Mm -hmm. I have no national framework. Okay. I renounce my nationality. Mm -hmm. I have the right to choose my own political allegiance. Mm -hmm. I've been operating and I'm 69 years old. I did that when I was 26 mm -hmm. and so forth. And mm -hmm. I've been operating as a world citizen in this one world ever since. Good. Now, uh, we've started. We have said, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's why we set up the world government, because we're building the constituency now okay. of other people okay. who are exercising their right of political choice. Okay, good. That's good that you do that. And it's not going to do you any good to be a world citizen if somebody else blows the whole thing up and you go with it. It's not going to do you well, any good to say, uh, I'm to, protected. Yeah, because so it's We're trying to prevent that. No, but I'm trying to make the point. Well, from that, the what the point thing. is that we could blow ourselves up? No, that it was I not. started from that point, Harold. No. I knew that the nuclear weaponry in 1945 I'm, was an absolute weapon. We were Einstein not. Einstein said it. We don't, have to, we don't have to belabor that point. No, we don't. No, I think the point should be made. If I would, we need if you let me make the, we? No, if you make me, allow me Harold, to make the what point. what is your solution? Let me allow me to make the point. No, would you I know please? the point you're making. No, you the, don't. The point I don't is think that we can do. blow ourselves up. No, no, that's the point. The What's point the solution? is one of the points. That, no, you know, I'm not talking about. A, I'm talking about a reality that exists, and that's <laughs> new. Couldn't do it in the Second World War. There's something new blowing in the wind. That's what I'm trying to get at. Now, well, that's, that's what I said. 1945. No, 1945. The, the we, were still, we were impotent. We were, no, we weren't species lethal. We were firebombing Dresden. We were killing each other, and we were impotent no, in the, the process. The nuclear bomb started a whole new age. It started it, but the they nuclear. were not nuclear. They were not nuclear. They were not species lethal in 1945. What they were not supposed to species lethal until about 1970. Well, That's we, when they become to be seen. Even uh, well, Cuban what do we do missile. About it? What, well, no, but the point is now what. How what, do we neutralize that? What, Give me an answer. Uh, well, the one thing that's a. I know the analysis. That's a capability. How do we, we have? How we do we analyze? How do we, we can't test how, it? How do we? I want to ask you a question, how sir. How do we get over it, Howard? No, I want to ask you a the question. The gun's pointing at you, sir. Okay. How do we? It's all of us. Okay. Yeah. Now we know that. Okay. Right. Now on the positive side. Let's say that's a negative we thing. We recognize existential, the reality of one an world and one human species. No, you're talking and about this a is chain. one planet, and we're all on it. But you're and we've talking, been talking about one God for <coughs> thousands of years, we're and we're talking about we have the deity in us, and we have a conscience, and we have an intelligence, uh -huh. and we have to put it together. And I always pointed out if we can get a mail, a, a letter to anybody in the world by going into a post office, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a systemic way of thinking, mm -hmm. and we have to apply that to the world that system. And when I pointed out that you have to go to bed tonight, and I go to bed tonight, and I don't care what this program says, mm. you're going to go to sleep, and I'm going to go to sleep, and everybody mm. who's listening to my voice is going to go to sleep tonight. Yeah. And that means we are a system yeah. already. Well, it has been, yeah. But in terms of this extended thing, that's something that exists new. What I'm looking for is this, <laughs> there's nothing new what, about that. What is on the, that's the oldest, what uh, oldest story in the world? No. What Socrates that, called himself a world citizen Socrates 2,500 not, years ago. They could not destroy the species then we can now there's something new sure. now wait a minute let me make the point sure. you don't get to what on the positive side is equally significant in terms of an existential new reality that has been the basis of forming an operating manual for how we're going to organize the world society that is equally existentially significant as the fact that we can now destroy it what is so, what is occurring, it would be at a level of capability. It's not, well, it's, it's all simple. of the institutions prior to that are reified within the institutions we've inherited. But what's new? Right here. 
World? No, this is a good way to do it. No, okay. this is that. This is it. This is it. Show it to the audience. I will, by all means. I got no... Mr. World Citizen number one. My, my contention uh, is that there is, at the level of capability, as Mr. Fuller introduced, some others there are, we actually, with technological assistance, have, tra have transcended material scarcity. Material scarcity no longer is relevant. It's been relevant, actually, in a system systems way, right up until about 1970. We've transcended material scarcity, and the ontologic reality is one that allows for there to be operating a new system that might be able to bring everybody in and get over the nightmare of injustice, sure. which James Joyce correctly indicated as being a nightmare. You so this is time. That's a that's a thing that could be brought. It's never mentioned. It's never mentioned well, anywhere. We're mentioning it now. Well, we're mentioning it, but it's not mentioned. And you've been in mentioning terms it in programs. You you've had on this program many people who've mentioned it. You had Bucky Fuller on your program. Bucky you've had all all these uh, philosophers on your program. You have had Norman Curlin on your program. Norman's great. You've, you're, had, you've had Arthur Canigas on your program. I've had Arthur Canigas. <laughs> I've had Sidney Greenfield, who we're going to have again yeah, on another. They're always no, been arguing no, with you but, about this one point. But it's not in the dial. You don't hear. You don't. It. You don't accept what they. All these people that you've been. Uh, no, I'm interviewing now for years and years and years. I don't because you interviewed me the first time in Washington. How many years ago was that? That was way back in Norm's office. That was way back, and oh, you were, putting it, a, you were uh, pumping it out. World. world uh, New, what was what it? Van, Van Ness East. In your apartment in Van Ness East. Oh I my don't, God. That I was, don't remember. I, Back in the old. <laughs> anyway, that's my thought. And congratulations. And this is, of course, the World Citizens no, card. What we're building is a constituency yeah. of world citizens. And, yeah. What we're doing is claiming, first of all, mm -hmm. as I pointed out in my yeah. book, there are three major principles. Mm. One God, one world, one humanity. Well, okay, you, okay. there are people who now, don't accept God. I don't care what people okay. do accept. I don't use the word God. I can use the word reason. I can use wisdom. I can use origin. I can use absolute. It doesn't matter what the word is. Well, you can use value, top value. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Well, it, because the word itself is not what it is. You can use consciousness, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter. Nobody can deny that we're living on one planet. Now we have the physical evidence. First of all, we know we're living on this one planet, yeah. whether we like it or not. Yeah. You come out of your mother's womb, you come out into the world. You don't come out into a political fiction called the United oh, States okay. of America or something. And the third thing is that, as I pointed we out... We've got to round it up. We've we only got about one, 30 seconds. We're one species. Now, you're a showbiz now. Get the soft shoe in. Yeah. we got to get to the... Show the people, Michael. Show this. Honest to God. Uh, this is world citizen number one, Gary Davis. He's done enormous work, beneficial work toward gaining toward a peaceful understanding of the of improving the human condition, including the universal passport. All of his work pleasure and an honor to be able to welcome you, I'm sir, so once again to Conversations again. in New York City. Harold, you're, so good to see you're you. You're a wonderful host. Okay.